How y'all doing? It's another episode of Truth Seeking Trucker. We're getting to our Father's Word in the book of Ezekiel 34. And with that, let's begin with some prayer. Father God, thank you for uh, this uh, message that you've given to us. As we go into it, may we have eyes to see, ears to hear, a tongue to speak the truth to others, to walk boldly in the Word of God that it is the truth and the light and brings the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations, all kindreds, all people. And uh, so they'll have the knowledge and the, sh- and the sword of truth to wield against Satan in the end of times. And with that, we thank you and we praise you, the Most High God, the God that rules the universe. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen. All right, let's begin. So last uh, chapter, we spoke a little bit about um, the watchmen, the duties of it again, and uh, the consequences of not doing your job, warning the people, and uh, but we're not responsible once the people are warned on their decisions. So with that, let's start chapter 34. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Verse 2, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe, okay, we got something big right here, right? Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. I should should not the shepherds feed the flocks? It's a question. Like, you're doing the opposite, right? Verse 3, Ye eat the fat and the clothe you with the wool. You sh- kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. Um, so what we got here is, uh, you know, the shepherd, you know, it's reference to um, what uh, somebody who ministers uh, to uh, a congregation or, or teaches God's word um, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Uh, this is a uh, duties, right? And we're seeing the example of the shepherd who does the things he's not supposed to do. And uh, he gets fat. And when I, when I heard, when I heard that the, this uh, message came to, to me that um, brought back forth the memory of a book that we read in school, which I believe is no more required reading. Right. And this is not biblical. You know, so we're going to something else. It's called the, the, um, what's it called? The farm. Hold on. Let me look that up. Give me one second. The animal farm. Okay. I don't know if you remember that as a, kid uh they don't have it read anymore required reading and it talks about in reference to using symbolically the animals of uh and how it became communist came to be in the ways that a child can understand it and how bad communism is and when i heard about these shepherds getting fat you know towards the end of this book and i don't remember i don't know why i remember this book but it was a book i remember so long ago um, maybe because I liked animals and, uh, the pigs were the leaders of these, um, of, of this communist movement and the pigs at the end were getting fat and, the um, the people were getting starved, right? And they're gorging themselves like, like pigs getting bigger and bigger. And, and the whole thing was, let's go ahead and, and, uh, bring all the goods into one place where we can hold it. And uh, we will disperse it equally amongst people, kind of like so- socialism, right? But the ones in control got to consume as much as they wanted when the, when really the um, the working class or the common man were the ones that kind of were told what they can have and when they can't. And um, I see this as a good overlay for um, these shepherds, right? They're over here getting um, uh, fat off the flock, you know. Oh, you know, give us ties, uh, you know, 
living off that to the point where it's just it's an atrocity in a way you know you're some people are, are given everything they have and these uh some of these false teachers and we see them we know who they are you know who they are in their heart you don't even have to believe in god to see it and um uh it's unfortunate because they're making them they're making this uh christianity seem to the unbeliever as uh just a way to con people and actually it's um, a way to salvation and uh, they're going to be held responsible you know the judgment starts in the house of god so they may i, I think no rightful man in his right mind would um believe if god if they knew god exists they would be fearful of <laughs> And and when I laugh, that's a nervous thing because I don't I would not want to be in their shoes. I'll tell you that I would not be one of them in their shoes. I I never went through seminary. I just you know I treat I uh I have a love for the Bible and I want to learn more. Um, I don't expect like I know everything, but I know one thing is that you don't play around with this because you know it says don't beware of the man that can murder your body, but the one that can kill your soul. And um, so you're responsible. God gave you a mind to think. And at some point, the Holy Spirit will talk to you. And are you going to be um, loyal to a man? Are you going to be loyal to traditions of men? Are you going to be loyal to a denomination when it goes against the word of God? You need to really understand that you're going to be held responsible as well. Yeah, they might get a stiffer penalty, but I mean, hell is hell, regardless of, of what, you know, if there's different which I believe is different uh, sentencing to certain sins, you know, and I don't want to get too much into that, but that, that doesn't seem acceptable on either side. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and continue. Verse three, uh, verse four, excuse me. The diseased have yet ye not, not strengthened. So disease is also named for the weak. Um, uh, Neither have ye healed that there was sick. That's what we're called to do is to heal, right? Pray for them in the, in the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. These are responsibilities of a, a man of God, right? Neither have ye bound up that which was broken, you know, healed up. Um, have you, neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Well, you know, what's driven away? Evil spirits. We're, we're told to cast out demons too, right? And you're bringing them back because remember what a demon does? It comes back to see if the house is empty and then it brings seven, seven more, more vile than the first one, All right? So I can see this is, you're bringing in evil spirits and uh, neither have ye sought that which was lost. You're not seeking... You're not uh, looking for those that need, you know, listen to the Holy Spirit. But with the force and with the cruelty, have you ruled them? You're just another uh, charlatan, right? Somebody's out to seek a, a, a money off the backs of the working man. And these widows that put all their faith in God, that, you know, God will provide, you know, if they give, you know, and to be obedient. And here comes these so-called men of God that are, doing this atrocity and it's 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 a sickness it's it's you know so let's uh let's go ahead and move on verse five and i and i put this picture up here these are parched places this is parched land this is kind of like the desolation study we did in jeremiah first is the spiritual desolation and then comes the physical desolation and this is equivalent to People that walk away from God, you know, that disobey God. Let's go to Zechariah. I, I know I brought this up, but this is perfect because we're talking about the shepherd. So this is great um, to bring this back up. Zechariah 11, 15 through 7. And the Lord said unto me, take unto thee yet the instruments of the foolish shepherd. So this is exactly what's going on with these, shep these uh, shepherds in the... Ezekiel 34, 16 of a Zechariah, or excuse me, Zechariah 11, verse 16. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit, 
those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear the claws in pieces. 17. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean and dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. So, what we got here is a, a warning. You know, this foolish shepherd, you know, uh, um, you know, like pastors. Why, why do you think they call us pastors? Because they pastors are like shepherds. Right, that's a that's a what a shepherd does. That's the whole title of a, of a pastor, right? To take care of the flock. All right, let's move on. Verse five, and they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field, and they were scattered. This is very important. This is very important. People think that um, this uh, walk with the Lord is the easy walk, and we're a bunch of pacifists, but this is the tougher road to walk and there's a lot more responsibility. And when you mess up, people suffer six. My seven, therefore these shepherds hear the word of the Lord. Verse eight, as I live with the Lord God, surely because my flock become prey, and my flock become meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock. But the shepherd fed themselves and fed not my flock. So they're going around um, doing what to fulfill the uh, lust of the flesh, you know. And the people are just a means to fulfill that that perversion. And I call it perversion because you know it is a perversion of your body. Um, your morality, your ethics, and uh, just the way it is. And I got a picture of Jesus over here with Peter. I'm um, showing that, you know, God's here to save us. You know, our Lord's here to save us. You know, we're drowning in a sea of, uh, uh, you know, of apostasy and uh, false teachings and false prophets. But when we search for the face of the Lord, you know, we'll be saved. So don't be discouraged. You're on the right track if you're listening to this message. And uh, I'm not the one putting it together. I'm reading from the word of God. So verse 9. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. 10. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will acquire my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall they shepherds feed themselves any more. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they mean not meat from them. So you're getting fired, you're getting moved on. I'm taking the flock and I'm bringing them to bigger and better things. You have uh, uh, failed to do what you were told to do. And I'm relieving you of your command. Verse 11. For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. Verse 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep, that are scattered, so I will seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy, dark day. So these are also to the, um, the the house of Israel, the ten tribes, northern tribes that were scattered amongst the nations, right? And if you were a Gentile um, that was uh, grafted in, then you're part of the house of Israel too, right? We're in a different time. It's it's a great time to live because. Yeah, it might seem like there's bad stuff ahead, but Christ has done his works on the cross and defeated death. Believe in that, trust in that. Follow the Lord, get in the word of God every day. Next. Let's go ahead and uh, do a cross reference. You know, we hear, but we're hearing about this foolish uh, shepherd, but um, I heard of this great analogy um, um, to. Uh, you know, when it comes to learning how to uh, how to find out counterfeits, uh, with the counterfeits, um, you know, they do at the uh, at the mint. They uh, they study the 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 true uh, dollar bill, right? 
And that's how you can spot a counterfeit when you know the correct dollar bill, right? And um, that's going for the good shepherd. Who is the good shepherd? Our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's study the good, the good shepherd, and we can be able to, um, we'll be able to uh, uh, weed out the the false shepherds, right? The foolish shepherd. John ten eleven through eighteen. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep, right? Sacrifice, 12. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose sheep are not seeth the wolf coming. So we got to, um, the shepherd has to be able to see these wolves that are coming into the churches causing strife, um, trying to cause uh, uh, unrest, um, bringing false teaching, false uh beliefs you know they're the satan satanists and these uh secret societies they're coming in to disrupt the churches believe it and i don't believe it personally a christian should be part of a secret society i don't i think there's got to be as transparent as possible to the point where you know um you're you're transparent with god almighty first of all a hundred percent but with the Man, it's, um, you know, you got your outer circle and you got your inner circle, right? So it's a whole different teaching with that. And I want to get too much into it. Back to uh, 12 in the middle. Uh, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scatter the sheep. So you got to fight for your sheep, right? 13, the hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and he careth not for the sheep. He's just out for himself. 14. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known of mine. 15. As for the Father knoweth me, even so now I find I the Father, and I lay down my life <clears throat> for the sheep. So Christ is, is uh, um, sent by the Father, and he is the shepherd, and he's laying his life for his sheep. He's going to die for us. 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold them also i must bring and they shall hear my voice and they shall be one fold and one shepherd one israel one house of god one church one jesus <clears throat> one god almighty god of abraham isaac and jacob verse 17 therefore do my father loves me because i lay down my life that i might take it again 18 no man taketh it from me but I lay it down for myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my father. He will be resurrected. God, God knows it uh, because he gave him the authority to, to his son to do, do these things. Right? They love us. Did you tell them that you love them today? You tell the father you love them. You tell the son. Well, Right now is a good time. Back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 13. And I will bring them out of the people and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and all the inhabitants and places of the country. Sounds like uh, the scattering of the people are going to be returned, huh? Verse 14, I will feed them in good pastures, and upon the high mountains of Israel shall they fold be, and they shall lie in good fold, and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. 15, I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down with the Lord God. 16, I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and I will strengthen them that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong, and I will feed them with judgment. So God sees the ones that are suffering, and God's gonna um, God's gonna amend you and heal you, and He's gonna send the right ones to you, if not from Himself, and um, and working through Him. But the ones that are getting fat, they're gonna get they're gonna get destroyed in the judgment. All right? I got this. Uh, meme right here it says jesus said unto me feed my lambs right 
Um, big responsibility. Uh, I take it seriously just by reading the word of God. I, I, um, I don't take it lightly because I'm putting my, you know, I'm going to say it, my butt on the line right? by telling you these things. That's why I put these words up on the screen. So you see that I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to deter you from what the, the word of God says. And you, by t you strengthening you and the audience, guess what? You keeping me honest. Because I'm a man. I'll make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I'll make mistakes. This is not something where I'm, you know, I get into this role to uh, seem holier than now. What gets me in this role is because people are going to die. People are going to get destroyed by their own choices. And I want to do my part. And I want to help. If some by ignorance that they don't know. And some are just evil to the bone, I guess. I don't know. They just want to do what is wrong and, and enjoy people getting hurt. And I'm not, I don't like that. And I'll fight against that. <clears throat> so, uh, oh, I think this is Matthew. Hold on. I thought I put it in there. I think it was Matthew. Matthew 18. This is what God expects us to do. Matthew 18. I like it. We're going in the Old Testament. When I first started this journey, I wanted to get into the Old Testament, but I believe the Holy Spirit's taking me to prophecy. Um, eventually, I will get there to... Uh, but I think, you know, it's important to know how the, how uh, the church started, you know. So we're going to go to Matthew 18, 11 through 14. And it reads, For the Son of Man come to save that which was lost. 12. How think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray. Doth he not leave the ninety-nine and goeth into the mountains and seek the one which gone astray? Thirteen. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices. He rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety-nine which was not astray. Even so that is not that I will the Father which is in heaven, that one perish, these little ones sh should perish. So, you know, God takes every single person his importance and um, looks for looks for them. <clears throat> we got a knock too. We got a knock to the um, on that door, and Christ will be faithful to, to answer. Sorry, I had something in my throat. But I think this is a beautiful prayer of how, as individuals, that even if we're lost. God's going to seek us. He's going to want, he's going to be right there waiting. You know, remember, Will, we, he, we got to seek him too. But he'll give you signs. You know, he'll give you signs. And we got to have eyes to see him. Verse 17. <clears throat> Back to Ezekiel 34, verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and and cattle and between rams and he goats these he goats are um kind of like leaders i think they're um the ones who, who run the show you know um goats in between the difference between sheep and goats obviously you know the goats are more rebellious so these aren't necessarily good leaders these are leaders that are rebellious um don't believe in god that um are driven by the works of the flesh Okay, so verse 18, seemeth it a small thing unto you to do what have we, excuse me, I saw a flash, let me see, let me start over, 18, seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and have dr drunk of the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet, so 
what we got here is uh, uh, also people getting, you know, these goats doing evil works, you know, fouling up the pastures of the seat of the of the sheep, right? They're the tares in the uh, they were planted by the evil one, which is the de the devil, in the field in the parable of the um, of wheat and the tares in the New Testament, right? I think it's in Matthew thirteen. Um, check that out. Back to Ezekiel nineteen. As for my flock, they eat with that which I've trodden with your foot, and they drink that which I've fouled with your feet. So they're eating tares. They're not eating real food of, of God, the bread of life. You're sowing in bad, bad food with the false teachings, traditions of men, um, false prophets. 20. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. So, so God sees who's doing what. You ain't going to get nothing past God. <laughs> okay. Now this is something, this verse echoed in my mind for years. And this is important. Let's go ahead and go to John 21, 14 through 19. All right. Starting at verse 14. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after he was risen from the dead. So, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. What are lambs? They're baby sheep, right? 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto me, him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, feed my sheep. These are mature sheep. 17, he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter has grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But thou that shall be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee without thou wouldest not. 19. This spake his significant, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he, he has spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. So how do you feed the sheep? All right? How do you feed the lambs? These are different description of the, the growth and the maturity of a sheep from a baby Christian to a mature Christian. Right? But they all need to be fed with what? The word of God. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Um. If you need to discern, take your time with the word of God. It's better to do to to um, to take your time before speaking against speaking about something. And um, so that you don't have to correct yourself, because you, if you do mess up, you have to correct yourself. There's no. Oh, OK, well, you know, no, we have to correct ourselves and people mess up in ignorance. But um Jesus blatantly says right here, I don't know if blatantly is the word, but Jesus directly says, uh, uh, if you love me, you'll feed my sheep, All right? Do you love Jesus Christ, All right? We might not all start off the same, but it'll grow on you, you know? You know, maybe giving somebody one Bible verse a day, the you know, daily bread, you know? 
Um, very important. This made me think about, you know, do I really love Christ or am I just talking? You know, are we trying to do our part? You know, not everybody we compare ourselves and get envious towards others' um, uh, works in the church. Some people call some people to do something and just be uh, hospitable, you know, uh, to be a kind uh, encourager to come to Christ. I mean, I'm not going to downplay anybody. We all have a part in the body of Christ. You know, small and great, you know, we're not the superstar in this uh, in this uh this book it's jesus christ so always gonna remember that all right let's go back to ezekiel 34 verse 21 because you have thrust with the side and with the shoulder and pushed all the diseased or the weak with your horns horns meaning power uh rule rulers right it's a sign of power uh might Till you have scattered them abroad, 22, therefore I will save my flock and they shall be no more a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle, 23, and I will set up one shepherd over them. Who's that shepherd? Our Lord Jesus Christ. And he shall feed them, even my servant David, who he, and Jesus Christ came through the bloodline of David, right? And he shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. 24, and I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant, David, a prince among them. And I, the Lord, have spoken of it. So David's already been uh, long gone at this point, right? So we're speaking uh, umbilical to umbilical cord about Jesus Christ. Hey, come here. You guys want to go outside? Come on. Come on. Sorry, I got dogs. Go outside for a little bit. They're getting restless. Okay. Um, sorry. 24, middle of the verse. And of my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken of it. Um, 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. This is the new covenant, right? And I will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. So, the evil beast, I believe, is not just uh, literally. But I believe this to be literal, but also to be evil beast like the Daniel 7, the beast of the kingdoms. The demonic powers are behind the scenes causing all this. Um, uh, encouragement um temptation uh wickedness that that r runs through the land right i got a picture right here i am the way the truth and the life now this picture was done by a young lady and i should have wrote down her name i'm sorry but she was um uh, mentioned in that movie uh heaven is heaven for real heaven is for real excuse me and uh she uh she made all these, uh, you know, beautiful paintings, and she said that uh, they she seen well this boy died and went to heaven and seen Jesus Christ, and this girl was painting these uh these uh, Christian uh, paintings, and she and that boy that went up to heaven said that looks like Jesus. Um, now we'll find out. We'll find out definitely. Um, when Christ returns, it's just to be true. But this looks like a, a, you know, someone that would come out of that region. I mean, really depicts it, you know. So back to Ezekiel twenty-six, and I will make them with the places around about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the showers to calm down in the season, and there shall be showers of blessings. Twenty-seven. And the tree of the field, when she shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and there shall be safe in the land. And shall know that I am the Lord, then I have spoken the bands of their yokes. I have broken the bands of their yokes, and delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. So God's going to break them yokes, right? You know, you get into some financial slavery with debt. You know, you're, you're under the yoke of, uh, 
these people that have created this, you know, and I'm one to who's trying to get out of this too. I should have never done it. Um, I thought it was the only answer um, for moving from when I moved. And uh, now I'm paying for it, but God's giving me the means to uh, pay it off. And I'm, I'm, I'm driving towards that. I don't want any debt anymore. I'm tired of it. Debt makes me not be home with my family, you know, because I'm, I'm a slave to working, you know. And, yeah, we have a commitment to our employer, but uh, eventually I'm going to probably end up um, getting something closer to home, you know, and truck driving. So, and I'll have those options with no debt. 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. They shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely. None of them shall make them afraid. So we got here, I believe it's going to be in the second coming of Christ. The beast and the false prophet shall be thrown in the lake of fire with Satan. All right. That's when the true, um, when this true peace on earth will be. Verse 29, and I'll raise up them a plant of renown. Okay, who's that plant? That's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the good vine. When we're the branches, John 15, remember? We can't bear fruit without Christ. You know, and if we don't bear fruit, we're cat, we're pruned by God and cast into the fire. So it's kind of telling you right there, if you don't accept Christ, what awaits you? You know, you're re rejecting Christ, you're rejecting God. And you reject God, you reject Christ. It, it goes hand in hand. Um, 29. And I will raise up them from a plant of renown. And they shall be no more consumed with the hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. 30. Thus say shall that, that I, the Lord, their God, am with them. So, And that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. And I like this. Uh, I had a... Uh, I had like a little vision, um, but then I was seeing in my mind back black background with gold letters coming, and that's when I started seeing Bible verses in my mind. They weren't they weren't complete, they weren't, um, but they were just enough to where I can search for it on Google or um, Blue Letter Bible, and I would get the Bible verse faster because I wasn't I. I spent most of my life up till 30, I didn't really study the word of God, but I started seeing these gold letters coming and these gold letters weren't necessarily solid. Some of them were light. Well, you know, when you see dust in the room and the light comes through the window and the dust kind of um, re re uh, refracts the light, I was kind of seeing that in my mind's eye of these Bible verses to tell people. And, um, uh, you know, I just didn't know how to do it, but eventually I, I just, I, I walked into the sleep of faith to start this channel. Maybe God will give me a church one day. I don't know. Um, we'll see if I'm responsible enough to do, to handle that. You know, um, I know this, that I'm not going to be loyal to any man as far as, um, what to teach and when to teach it. Um, um, and I'm going to pray for discernment and I'm going to pray for conviction if I'm wrong, because I don't want to act like I'm going to always say the right thing. I want God to immediately convict me. And, you know, he does. He does. And um, that's a good thing, because if he loves you, he'll correct you. But don't ever think think so that you're being um, uh, punished because um god doesn't love you no you're getting corrected because god loves you and with that you know thank you for um for uh, coming into this uh bible study i really like this one a lot the, we studied the good shepherd and the foolish shepherd which one are you going to be it's your choice you know stick to the word of god um chapter by chapter verse by verse um and uh keep it in context you know and uh, sometimes even a word study will give you light. Uh, sometimes even the, um, 
you know, the, the numbers, the numbers give me a message too. So be still, know that I am God. That is the message. God's in control. God's got a perfect plan of, and his perfect plan is salvation through, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the timing, he will return at the right timing. Um, second coming of Christ, the great and terrible day of the Lord. God bless you and take care. Have a good rest of your day.